Welcome to another Essential SQL Minute. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the common data types used in SQL Server. So the first data type that's used, and there's going to be seven that we go over here, is the integer data type. And the integer data type is declared as uh, keyword INT. Now integers are whole numbers. The examples include values such as 1 or negative 99 or 234. They're, they're essentially numbers that don't have decimal points. And an integer can store a very large, small number such as uh, negative 2 billion all the way up to 2 billion. You can see here where we have an example where we declare an integer. So I'm declaring at my int as an integer, and then I'm setting my int to the value 9. I also have an example of a query where I am taking days to manufacture, which is declared as a column of integer data type, and I'm multiplying it by an integer value of 24 to find out how many hours it's taking to manufacture. The next two data types I want to go over are Vercare and Envercare. So Vercare is used to store textual data and Envercare is used to store Unicode data. So Unicode data is the extended textual data. It's, a, it's essentially uh, fancy data, usually foreign characters. Uh, it's two bytes per value. That's why a Vercare stores 8,000 characters, but a Envercare can only store 4,000 characters because Envercare is using two bytes per value. So examples of textual values would be like Hello Kitty or an address such as like 52132 Bluebell Avenue. It could be like a part number. This is a Ford part number. Or it could be a paragraph of text. Here you can see where we have defined an Envercare 50 from the AdventureWorks database. I think it's important to point out with Vercare and Envercare that even though a name could be defined as character 50, if you store a short name in the column such as Bob, it won't take up all 50 characters. So it's not going to be like Bob and then 47 spaces. So the nice thing about Vercare is it only takes up as much space approximately as what you put into it. The next data type we're going to go over is date time. And this is used to store a point in time. So examples would include like October 23rd, 1968 at 1.45 in the morning. You can see here it's showing the hours, the minutes, the seconds, and then hundreds of seconds or thousands of seconds that is and here's another example of the last possible moment before 2012 so this is December 31st almost at midnight so date times can range from January 1st 1753 through December 31st 19 or I guess 9999 so for contemporary dates, I think date time fits perfectly. However, if you're a writing a application for history and you need to work, for instance, dates from the Egyptian times, you may need to come up with a different way of storing that information because as you see, our date time only goes back to the year 1753. So here's an example of declaring a date time you see we're setting the date to date time and we can use single quotes and put our date in, in single quotes as year dash month and then day and it will implicitly get converted to date time this date time here curiously enough is going to have zero 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 as the hours minutes and seconds so it'll be implied on, on the date the nice thing about using a date time data type is, is that then you're able to use built-in functions that operate on date time, such as year, 
here would be an example of a query that would go out and summarize by year the number of employees that were hired. A decimal data type is used to show fractional values, those are that include decimals, and what sets the decimal data type apart from another data type called float is that the decimal data type is very good for financial applications. You'll see that decimal data types are defined with a precision and scale. This gives them uh, a very good exact nature, and you can see some examples where I would have uh, defined the decimal 8, comma three meaning I have eight total digits and a scale of three and so there's some examples of digits here where you'll see where I have five in the whole numbers position and then three in the decimal for a total of eight so the rule of thumb here really is is that the precision has to be less than 38 digits and so does the scale. So the scales can be less than the precision and the precision is going to be less than or equal to 38 digits. It's an example of declaring a decimal. Here it's seven total digits, four of which are in the decimal portion. One thing to point out is that if I had set this variable to let's say 3,651.32 I would get an overflow error because I've only defined it to have three places in the whole number. And if I try to define the variable or assign it with four, it'll overflow. One thing to point out when using decimals, on floats for that matter, is that when you specify them in your SQL, you need to put the decimal place in your statements. So here you'll say, I just don't say between 29 and 189. I'm saying between 29.00 and 189.00, and that helps signify that it's a decimal. So companion to the decimal data type is the float data type, and this is a really good data type to use for decimal values when you're dealing with scientific values. And the reason is, is that though decimal can um, be used for a large range of numbers it can't handle the magnitude of numbers that float can if you look here float can handle all the way up to uh, 360 so basically 17.09 times 10 to the 308th power so it'd be like 1.79 followed by 306 zeros so it's a very very large number for example, here's Avogadro's number, which is the number of atoms in a mole. So it's you know way past the trillions, very large number. Other examples of flow are like 2.50, or what I wanted to point out is some cases when you enter 2.50 internally, the number won't get represented exactly as 2.50, but maybe as 2.499999. So it becomes kind of tricky when you're comparing values with float. The, as the internal representation may be that one decimal place off. And then the last data type we want to cover is the bit data type. And this is used to signify yes or no, or true or false. And examples include one for true and zero for false. And you can convert a true text value into a one, and false will convert to zero. So here I have an example where I am getting all job titles from human resources where the salary flagged is one. And this is the same thing as me selecting from the same query where the salary flagged is true and it'll implicitly take this true here and convert it to a one because it knows that this is a, a bit and so it's going to convert this data type to one. I'm declare a variable as bit and then I can just set that bit to one or zero. 
So these are the main data types that are used in SQL. There are other variations. I would encourage you to go study them. But by and large, if you learn these seven, these were, are the ones that you need for um, to know for the 70761 exam and essentially are the main data types that you could use today to design and construct your database.